In this video, we're going to learn about base class access specifiers in C++. So when using inheritance in C++, we can provide a base class access specifier, either public, protected, or private. And that base class access specifier is going to affect how members are inherited by the derived class. So for example, if we use the protected base class access specifier, then a public member variable in the base class will become a protected member variable in the derived class. If we use the private base class access specifier, then a protected member variable in the base class will become a private member variable in the derived class. Now, typically speaking, we use the public base class access specifier. If we don't provide one, the default is actually private. Let's go over an example of inheritance in C++ to learn more about how these base class access specifiers work. So here we'll say class, base class, and we'll create public, protected, and private members. So we'll say public, int, public member, private, int, private member, and then we'll make a protected member as well. We'll say protected int protected member. Now let's make a derive class so we can test out the effect of these different base class access specifiers. So we'll say class derive class colon, and this is where the access specifier goes. So we could say here public base class. And what we're doing is inheriting the base class with the public access specifier. And we can see the effect that's going to have using the table down here. So with the public base class access specifier, private member variables of the base class are going to become inaccessible in the derived class. Protected members are going to become protected members and public members are going to become public members. Let's test this out. So if we have a private member in the base class with a public access specifier that should be inaccessible in the derived class. Let's try that. We'll say void member and we'll make a member function here and we'll try to access that private member. So we'll say underscore private member is equal to 20. If we try this, we get an error right away. So a private member is a private member of base class. So we can't access private members. Let's try to access the protected member. So we'll say underscore protected member is equal to 30. We'll save this, run it, and that's okay. We don't get any errors here because a protected member in the base class is going to become a protected member in the derived class when we use the public access specifier. Now, as a protected member, we're not gonna be able to access it outside of the derived class. So we'll call this derived class one. And let's make a derive class one instance. We'll say derived class one, derive one. And if we try to access that protected member here outside of the derive class, we will get an error where it says protected member is a protected member. So we can't do that. Now the public member in the base class, we can access that in the derive class and we can also access it outside the derived class because it's going to become a public member of the derived class. So we could say public member is equal to 10. And the main function, we could also say drive one dot public member is equal to 10. We can save that, run it, and we get no errors. So that's how the public base class access specifier is going to work. What about the protected base class access specifier? Let's go over that example. So we'll say class derive class two, and this time we'll say protected base class. And we're gonna inherit base class using the protected access specifier. We'll make another member function so we can test things out. Now, as with the public access specifier, private member variables are gonna be inaccessible. So same as before, 
if we tried to say private member is equal to 30 here, if we try to save and compile this, we'll get an error. Private member is a private member of base class. And it's the same issue as before with the public access specifier. When we use the protected access specifier, the private members of the base class are going to become inaccessible in the derived class. Now with protected, it's also going to behave the same as with the public base class access specifier. A protected member in the base class is going to be a protected member in the derived class when we use the protected access specifier. So we should be able to access the protected member again. We'll say protected member is equal to 20, save this, run it, and we can access the protected member in the drive class. We can't access it though outside of the drive class. So if we made a drive class two instance here, drive class two, and we'll say drive two, and then we'll say derived two dot protected member is equal to 30. If we save this here and run it, we get an error because it's a protected member. So same as with the public access specifier again, a protected member in the base class is going to be a protected member in the derived class. What about public members? So public members, there's going to be a difference. If it's a public member in the base class, it's going to become a protected member in the drive class when we use the protected base class access specifier. So let's see what happens with our public member here in the base class. We're still going to be able to access it in the drive class. So we can say public member is equal to 10. And if we save this and run it, we get no error here. It's okay. But because we're using the protected access specifier when inheriting the base class, this public member from the base class is now going to become a protected member in the derived class. So we won't be able to access it outside of the class. So for example, if down here we tried to say derived to dot public member is equal to 30 and we save this and try to run it, we get an error. And that's because it's a protected member now and we can't access it outside of the class itself. So finally, let's look at the private base class access specifier. With this one, again, private member variables in the base class are going to be inaccessible in the derived class. But both protected and public member variables are going to become private in the derived class. So let's give this a try now. We'll make one more drive class. We'll say class drive class three private base class. And now we're using the private access specifier when inheriting the base class. Again, we'll make a member function here. We'll say void member. And again, we're not going to be able to access that private member. So if we say private member is equal to 30 here, we save this, we'll get the same error we got before because a private member in the base class is going to be inaccessible in the derived class when we use the private access specifier. Now, what about the protected and public members? Those are both going to become private members now. So in our derived class, we can access both of them. So here we could say protected member is equal to 10 and public member is equal to 20. And if we save this and run it, we can do that okay. Because they're both private members, they're not going to be accessible outside of this class here. So if in the main function, we try to make an instance of the derived class three, we're going to find that we can't access the public and protected member variables. So we say derived three dot public member is equal to 20 and derived three dot protected member is equal to 30. If we try this, we will get an error in both cases. And the error is telling us that these are both now private members. Now as private members, if we were to do one more layer of inheritance, we would find that they would not be accessible at all 
in the next inherited class. So for example, if we said class next level and we inherit derive class three, these are both private members now in drive class three. If they were protected or public, then when using the public base class access specifier, we would have access to those in the drive class. But because they're private, they're going to be inaccessible in this next level of inheritance we're doing, even if we're using the public base class access specifier. So if here I try to make another member function, and in this member function, I try to access protected member and public member, we're not going to be able to. So I'll say protected member is equal to 20 and public member is equal to 30. If I save this, try to run it, they are just not accessible. So this is how the base class access specifier works in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.